What is up, Scream Team? Zach Cherry here. And now that there are 12 proper Ghostface killers in the Scream film franchise, sorry, Jason, we can correlate each one's personality to fit into their own unique sign of the Zodiac. Obviously, everyone has a Zodiac sign, and I trust that if you're watching this, you know which one yours is. So let me know in the comments which Ghostface killer you got. And please understand that even though we are looking at the absolute worst traits of each sign, this video was just for fun and not meant to be taken seriously. Seriously. Although I will low-key be dragging each and every single one of you. So how we're gonna do it is by breaking it down like this. There are 12 signs of the zodiac that are made up of the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water, as well as the three different modalities, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Each zodiac sign's personality is made up of a unique configuration of these two variables. In this case, the elements represent a person's basic nature, while the modalities represent their style of expression. Translating that into the context of these signs being ghost face killers, that's going to help us not only understand their motivation for being the killer, but also allow us to identify their modus operandi, or more specifically, how they operate through their plan as the killer. Cardinal signs represent creation, so these will be the ghost face killers who initiate the plan or come up with ideas. More often than not, these will be the mastermind killers, but while they're really good at setting things in motion, they struggle when it comes to reaching their goals, as they often lack the energy or follow through to see things through to the end. Fixed signs represent preservation, so these will be the ghost face killers who are loyal to the mission. Basically, these are your stubborn, obsessive types as they've got the endurance and stamina needed to stick to the plan. However, because they're so weighted down by their own way of doing things, they won't know how to adapt to any sudden complications that may arise. Mutable signs represent transformation, so these are the ghost face killers who excel at ironing out all the small details of the plan. They're really good at adapting through change, so minor complications won't phase them, but due to their fickle nature and tendency to take on too many tasks at a time, they're the ones who get very scattered and lose focus of the bigger picture. As far as the elements go, fire signs will be our ghost face killers who are motivated spiritually through passion, enthusiasm, and boldness. Earth signs will be our ghost face killers who are motivated physically through hard work, practicality, and being grounded. Air signs will be our ghost face killers who are motivated motivated mentally through logic, communication, and intellectual thinking, and water signs will be our ghost face killers who are motivated emotionally through empathy, subconscious, and intuitive feeling. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's start with Aries, who's going to be represented by Roman Bridger. Aries are the first sign of the zodiac, and therefore are considered to be natural-born leaders who set the pace rather than follow it. They're confident, charismatic, independent, and daring, and as a fire sign, they obviously possess a fiery energy and are passionate and adventurous in all of their pursuits. With a cardinal modality, they're also known to be go-getters who like to set things in motion, which makes sense for Roman as he is canonically the killer who started it all. And even though he wasn't the first one to commit a murder, it was his strong sense of leadership that inspired Billy to kill Maureen Prescott, as Ares are risk-taking trailblazers whose optimism, creativity, and determination can be used as motivating factors to influence others. However, However, they're also extremely childish and known to be selfish and sensitive and belligerent and can display violent tempers fueled by arrogance and anger. After all, they only want to be heard but never actually listen, and trying to take anything away from an Aries can set them off easily as they have a propensity to trample over other people in order to get what they want in life. And while an Aries can manage a group of people quite successfully, they typically don't fare too well in teamwork settings as they tend to think that they know best. And and consider it to be beneath them to work on the same level as those who they deem to be their subordinates. Therefore, they're more likely to do things on their own as they believe they know the best way to get a job done, which also aligns with Roman's characteristics as to this date, he is the only ghost face killer of the bunch to perform his mission entirely solo. As they're obviously known to have no chill, Ares routinely experience rampant mood swings where they get stressed out very easily. They're known to be impatient and impulsive and their need to jump into action can result in recklessness. Remember, cardinal signs are great planners, but they struggle with completion, which is showcased especially in Roman's scheme, as he had everything intricately staged throughout the movie, but was way too focused on his future goals that he forgot to take care of loose ends, leading to Sydney and the other survivors besting him. This is probably because Ares are too courageous and energetic for their own good, as they often approach every situation as a challenge or competition, which they'll refuse to turn down due to 
to their insatiable need for the attention they get from winning. This goes hand in hand with Roman's desire to be in the spotlight, as he literally explains to Sydney that he wants to be seen as the hero, as he believes he's more deserving of the life she has, as in his mind, he worked much harder than she did in order to achieve it. Therefore, with Sydney being the only one standing in his way, it would make sense for an Ares-born Roman to do any and everything in his power to usurp his sister's position as the proverbial star of the Scream franchise. Next up is Taurus, who's going to be represented by Quinn Bailey. Taurus is one of the most self-assured and stubborn signs of the Zodiac. More than any other sign, they thrive on routine and repetition, and refuse to change their habits for anyone or anything. If for whatever reason a Taurus experiences the slightest disharmony within their everyday rhythm, they'll feel as though they're losing control of their lives, and become insecure and vulnerable as a result. You may be wondering how this applies to Quinn, as she's not necessarily one of the more well-defined characters of the lot, but when you take into consideration that she is a ghost face killer who's trying to conceal her true identity as Richie's sister, one would think that a certain level of covert operation would be in order to maintain that cover, especially in a living situation. For Quinn, however, her quirkiness as the Carpenter's sex-positive roommate feels so incredibly lived in that it's hard to imagine this as part of some undercover act, but rather as being part of her true nature, as she puts just as much priority into herself as she does her family's plan for revenge. In other words, the only way Quinn might have agreed to participate in this devious scheme is if she was able to continue living her life as authentically to herself as she possibly could. It should also come as no surprise that Tauruses are seekers of carnal pleasure and satisfying experiences. They're oftentimes categorized as being lazy individuals who are happiest when they're spending an evening at home, as they're too enamored with feeling good and enjoying fine tastes to really care about anything else going on in their lives. That's not to say that they don't care about other people or things, or that they're not hardworking, but they're definitely okay with doing the bare minimum and allowing others to pick up their slack. As a fixed sign, Taurus is very loyal to the people in their lives, and even though they're especially materialistic, they will treat their loved ones with just as much importance as any of their prized possessions, even going as far as not wanting to share them with anyone else. Because of this need for stability, they'll cling to their friends and family as though they're part of their routine, and if anything threatens to break the monotony of their lives, such as the death of a sibling, they'll stop at nothing to correct the course, as they want things to go their way at all costs. For that reason, Taurus can be an extremely vindictive sign, and they'll never forget the people who hurt them. They have an aggressively bad temper that rears its head when their peace is threatened, and their one-track mind can find them following dogmatic beliefs, even if these are beliefs that they made up themselves. Next up is Gemini, who's going to be represented by Richie Kirsch. Fueled by the element of air, Gemini is one of the most intellectually curious signs of the Zodiac. They're analytical thinkers, great communicators, and are typically known to be happy-go-lucky individuals who possess a natural charisma and ability to light up any room. Obviously, this fits nicely with Richie, as throughout most of his movie, he displays this in spades with his charming personality and witty sense of humor, which is mostly translated through by his endless capacity for sarcasm. However, Geminis are notoriously known for being sneaky and two-faced, which is a little redundant to bring up here since technically that can be applied to every character on this list, just by virtue of them being ghostface killers, but these are negative traits that are almost exclusively attached to this sign, as Geminis are known to be contrarians by nature. This is probably due to their mutable and changeable quality, as their mind is always moving at the speed of light, and their constant need for stimulation will routinely lead to them changing their opinions and positions, as they're always assimilating and deliberating new information as it comes in. This can be identified in Richie's style as the killer, as Sam constantly disrupts the flow of his plan throughout the movie, forcing him to come up with new and creative ways at the last minute in order to line the pieces up exactly as he needs them. This comes quite easily to Gemini's though, as they love to intellectualize everything they say and do, working for them as sort of a defense mechanism to not only justify their actions, but also give them the devious ability to lie and selectively tell the truth with a straight face. Because of this, they're great at connecting socially, from which they'll gain the inside scoop on the lives of everyone around them. However, while that might make them appear as a supportive and trustworthy friend, they'll secretly be airing your dirty laundry in public, while using passive manipulation and gaslighting tactics in order to influence, deceive, and ultimately gain control. While this works for Richie, allowing 
allowing him to coast for quite some time, it eventually blows up for him in the finale. As I mentioned from before, mutable signs can easily lose focus of the bigger picture. We see this specifically with his erratic and flighty behavior, as he rapidly shifts from one emotional and mental state to the next, managing to overcomplicate his plan by becoming anxious, impulsive, indecisive, and overthinking everything. Next up is Cancer, who's going to be represented by Nancy Loomis. Cancers are considered to be one of the most nurturing signs of the Zodiac, as they naturally approach others with a loving and caring attitude, and are known to be patient, compassionate, and intuitive. With the element of water, they're ruled by their emotions, which makes them sensitive people who take care not to rub others the wrong way. However, in their pursuit of everyone else's happiness, they tend to come off as clingy and obsessive, and they take it to heart when they aren't met with the same level of emotional investment. Since cancers are so highly attuned to everyone around them, it sometimes takes just the slightest provocation to cause them to feel ignored and undervalued. But especially in a case involving the betrayal of a cheating husband, it's not unlike them to detach and disassociate from themselves as they sink into a negative mental state. This pessimistic outlook can oftentimes manifest itself into self-doubt and skepticism towards the intentions of the ones they love, and despite the fact that cancers are instinctively family-oriented, these extreme mood swings will pull them down to their darkest depths where it's usually easier for them to avoid confrontation by ghosting people. Like Aries, cancers are also a cardinal sign, which means that they are creators of ideas and influencers of action. This comes effortlessly to them as emotional manipulation is one of their greatest strengths, and because they're good listeners who are well regarded by everyone around them, they have a comprehensive understanding of the human condition. When combined with the element of water motivating them emotionally, they could easily harness this tool into an elaborate revenge scheme, as it's not out of character for them to take things personally and become absorbed by their boundless grief to the point of flying off the handle. For a cancer who clings to the past, they do not forgive easily and find it even harder to forget. They'll replay these hurtful situations in their minds on repeat, leading them to feel like failures, and they'll choose to spend their time wallowing in encompassing despair without ever doing anything to improve their circumstances. It's because of this mindset that they'll feel misunderstood and believe that the world should change around them in order to adapt to their own emotional needs. They'll react very strongly to anyone who tries to put the blame on them, usually deflecting accountability, and will become way too overwhelmed by their intensified feelings, where they'll refuse to accept that they ever did anything wrong. In that regard, it's not uncommon for a ghost face killer under this sign to view themselves as the victim, as their intentions, as irrational as they may be, are ultimately coming from a place of good, even if the moral outcome is far from ideal. Next up is Leo, who's going to be represented by Billy Loomis. Leos are one of the most confident signs of the Zodiac, which often leads them to believing that the world revolves around them. However, it's not always just their perception, as their strong personalities do tend to make them the center of attention. This is evidenced with Billy by the fact that after six films in the franchise, he's still positioned in the plot as one of the most significant killers of the bunch. Even considering all of the other ghost faces, well, they laid low throughout most of their respective films. Billy intentionally sought out the spotlight by making himself the prime suspect. Of course, he was exonerated later on as expected, but he specifically wanted to create the optics that he was the obvious killer, as it's in a Leo's nature to sensationalize every aspect of their life. As a fire sign, Leos are prideful and arrogant individuals who are capable of immense energy and drama. This is not a bad thing, but on the darker side of the spectrum, that could lead them to being tyrannical authoritarians, as this is something we see play out against Stu, as Billy takes on a very abusive role in their partnership. Their fixed quality also makes them very headstrong and stubborn, and unlike their fellow fire sign Aries, when a Leo gets riled up, they stay that way for a very long time, or at least least until they feel they've regained control of the situation. Leos also have quite a jealous streak, however, since they're very egotistical, they're not actually jealous of other people per se, but rather jealous when people don't pay enough attention to them. Billy showcases this to us in his relationship with Sydney, as he takes it as a personal slight when she becomes withdrawn following the murder of her mother. Remember, everything a Leo does is in the aim of standing out, and it therefore becomes very frustrating for them when nobody notices the effort they put into looking and acting the way they do. Of course, if they weren't so self-absorbed and self-indulgent, they might be able to consider alternate approaches 
choices. However, they tend to ignore advice and push for things that aren't good for them, where in some extreme cases, they have been known to be promiscuous in relationships. Leos love to be loved and are very generous and giving of themselves, but if they feel like you're disregarding their self-respect, their loyalty will shift and they'll begin to look elsewhere to get the attention they're lacking, which in Billy's case resulted in an unplanned teenage pregnancy, which as we're shown throughout the later sequels has had severe consequences that continue to live on long after the initial transgression took place. Next up is Virgo, who's going to be represented by Ethan Landry. Virgos are known for being the perfectionists of the Zodiac and are probably the most well-organized of the bunch. Now, in fairness to Virgo, Ethan is kind of the most underwritten ghost face killer as we don't really spend a whole lot of time getting to know him. So he's not exactly a textbook example of this Zodiac sign, but there is enough depth of character that we can still make the correlation. And given the fact that the symbol for Virgo is quite literally the Virgin, it makes it kind of ironic when you consider Ethan's sex life or lack thereof. Virgos tend to be highly critical people, not just towards others, but also of themselves, usually finding deficiencies and failures in everything around them and within. They always have a desire to do better, which can push them to hope for unrealistic expectations and pursue goals they're not ready to face. This inclination to ask too much of themselves often leads to low self-esteem, as when their objectives end up backfiring, they tend to internalize their failures. Because of this, it's possible that a dejected or demoralized Virgo might feel inadequate and undeserving of love, and in turn, could judge everyone else severely based on their own need to improve. In a way, Ethan is very much established as a pushover, not just within his assumed role in the friend group, but also in the way he's made to live in the shadow of his older brother, where he appears to be eager to do anything it takes in order to gain the same level of approval and acceptance from his father. This is sometimes characteristic of Virgo, as they tend to have a hard time saying no to a challenge, and end up overextending themselves as they forget to look after their own well-being with as much energy and dedication as they used to look after others. As a mutable sign, they also obsess over the smallest of details gone wrong, and their insatiable need to have things go in a prescribed way can cause them to be rather unbearable to the people around them. However, this is only because they prefer order over chaos, as once they've found the focus and drive to put their mind to task, there's no stopping them from achieving their goals. This could, however, have consequences for Ethan and his family, as this trait gives Virgo a sort of savior complex. For instance, if they see a problem, they instinctively want to fix it, such as cleaning up Quinn's mess when he sees that she failed to kill Mindy on the subway. As a Virgo, Ethan would be inclined to step up when things seem chaotic and out of control, in order to normalize the situation, even if it means losing sight of the bigger picture. So, even though rescuing Mindy doesn't align with his family's intention of killing off the core four, it's still within the nature of a Virgo's personality to panic at the slightest of complications and make an executive decision that they believe will mitigate any further damages. Next up is Libra, who's going to be represented by Stu Mocker. Libra is considered to be the peacekeeper of the Zodiac, and therefore they tend to be very diplomatic. They're creative, expressive, and free-spirited, and have a mostly positive outlook on the world, as they like to leave themselves open to the endless possibilities that life has to offer. Because of this, however, they can also be extremely indecisive, and their tendency to examine the pros and cons of every situation often leads to passive indifference and an inability to make good choices. As we can see with Stu, a lot of this stems from his want and need to look good through the eyes of others, as vanity is a very strong characteristic that Libras are known to possess. This leads them to being self-conscious about their appearance and popularity, which can attract shallow and superficial relationships that Libra intrinsically deems as being a form of social currency. Because of that, they could easily be influenced and coerced by their peers, as it's within a Libra's nature to keep up with their current social standing. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're mindless sheep, however, as on the contrary, Libras are actually very manipulative themselves, and and get what they want through language, charm, and communication. With Aries and Cancer before them, Libra is also a cardinal sign, and even though Stu isn't a mastermind planner like Roman and Nancy are, he still leads through the element of air as he displays the social prowess and easygoing disposition needed in order to influence the other characters and move them around like chess pieces. However, as is the case with the cardinal modality, there's not much room for expansion once the initial concept has been conceived. And although 
Stu is eager to take credit for his share of ideas, which includes starting a new project when it comes to planning the sequel, he's left wounded and aimless amidst the project he's currently in the middle of, which easily allows Sydney to gain the upper hand and take him down. If there's one major drawback to being a Libra-born ghostface though, it's in the fact that the people of this sign are known to be notorious gossipers, and therefore are horrible at keeping secrets. Obviously, this is not an ideal trait that you would want in your ghostface partner, as even Billy displays annoyance on several occasions at Stu's inability to keep his mouth shut. Even then, they're not actually interested in using people's secrets against them, but rather just tend towards idle gossip as another form of cultivating superficial friendships in order to impress people and show them what they think of others. However, they can also be extremely vindictive if the situation calls for it, and while this might seem like a surprise due to their congenial personalities, this is actually in their nature since Libras, whose symbol is also the scale, are all about balance. For instance, if anyone were to push them hard enough or upset their inner peace and tranquility, they would likely go out of their way to restore the order of things by inflicting as much pain onto others as they had initially inflicted upon them. Next up is Scorpio, who's going to be represented by Wayne Bailey. Scorpio is considered to be the darkest sign of the zodiac, whose penchant for extremes will traditionally see them adopt a very all-or-nothing attitude. Because of this, they have an unmeasurable amount of loyalty, love, and affection for the people they care about, but can also channel that intensity towards those who cross them through manipulation, mistrust, jealousy, and vengeance. As a fixed water sign, their emotions run deep, and once they feel a certain way towards someone, there will be no turning back, as these feelings will often be bottled up and left unchecked, only to intensify with resentment over a very long period of time. Because of this, Scorpios are very good at masking their true emotions, which makes them one of the most difficult signs of the zodiac to read. But while this calmness typically gives them a reputation for being antisocial, their aloof nature and reality is a defense mechanism used to avoid getting their feelings hurt. Scorpios also have a very black and white mentality, which can prevent them from seeing nuance. This is displayed in Bailey's rationale against Sam as he refuses to accept her as anything other than the villain in his own story. Because of this outlook, Scorpios assume that anything bad that happens in their life is a personal slight against them, and they'll jump to the most extreme conclusions at the slightest provocation, where their inability to let go of past mistakes will lead them to concoct elaborate schemes in order to get revenge. This obsessive nature can be applied to just about every aspect of their lives, especially in a career as a police detective, as a Scorpio's ability to maintain deep focus while immersing themselves completely in their goals will reward them with the skill and tenacity needed to get to the bottom of almost any mystery. This is what ultimately allows Wayne to get the jump on Jason and Greg, as he was able to figure out their plan in record timing. However, while a more practical Zodiac sign might have allowed these amateur killers to proceed as they were and get revenge vicariously by way of omission, a Scorpio's drive for independence will instead find them needing to be in full control of the plan, as they prefer to be masters of their own fate, who will bend and shape their surroundings to fit the mold of their desired narrative. Their vindictive personalities will also find them being hypercritical, especially if they view you as a threat, and they'll have no issue belittling you and being outright condescending, as they know exactly what to say to hurt and humiliate their opponents, and will spare no resource in ensuring that they're the ones who have the last laugh. However, Scorpios are also known for dishing it out but not being able to take it, and if anyone were to meet them with their same level of intensity and venom, they will most likely erupt into a violent rage and unleash their stinger even if it means taking themselves down in the process. Next up is Sagittarius, who's going to be represented by Amber Freeman. Sagittarius is one of the most energetic and adventurous signs of the Zodiac, whose ambition, curiosity, and thirst for knowledge makes them eager to deeply explore a myriad of different interests, often leading them to take on enormous projects. This is accurate with Amber's motive as she recounts how discovering that her parents moving into the original murder house became the spark that ignited 
motivated her to go down the Stab franchise rabbit hole. On the surface, Sagittarius can bear an aloof and detached personality that sometimes rubs people the wrong way, as they can be narcissistic, judgmental, and are known to be blunt to the point of rudeness. They're fun-loving individuals who don't like to be tied down by any rules, but they take their knowledge and own word as the gospel truth, and use their preferences and opinions as a template by which they measure the worth of others. Because of this, they have trouble taking people at face value, and their excitement for life can easily be channeled into anger, which in turn can find them creating and holding on to intense grudges. It's worth pointing out how all three of our fire signs straddle dangerously close to getting caught early on, as due to the element's expressive and excitable nature, their spontaneous and free-spirited approach found them showing their cards a little too soon. However, while Roman may have just been a little reckless and Billy probably enjoyed being the center of attention, the mutable quality of Sagittarius allowed Amber to easily maneuver through the situation, as this modality is well known for being able to thrive on change. This especially is evident throughout the movie as neither Amber or Richie seem to have a fully thought out plan and are mostly adapting to the events as they play out, which showcases her flexible nature and ability to roll with the punches. However, this can also be a major detriment for Sagittarius, as they tend to be risk takers with a shoot first, ask questions later mentality. This makes them very inconsistent and irresponsible as they don't always consider the consequences of their actions or could become easily distracted by their fleeting thoughts. Their thrill-seeking ways and carefree attitude make it difficult to stick to any one given plan, which finds them setting off on a new adventure before they can even see the first one through. This is usually brought on by the fatigue of overthinking and scrutinizing every aspect of their plan in order to make sense of it, where focusing too much on the small details often causes them to lose sight of the bigger picture. Next up is Capricorn, who's going to be represented by Jill Roberts. Capricorn is one of the most hardworking and practical signs of the Zodiac. They're logical, patient, and disciplined, and their grounded personality gives them the ability to understand how the world works around them. However, they're also skeptical, cynical, highly ambitious, and known to be greedy, and they use their understanding of the world to manipulate people and circumstances in order to attain great material wealth and other finer things in life. If they don't consider you a means to a material end in any aspect of their life, then they most likely won't have very much use for you, and if you ever do anything to wrong them, you can be sure to stay on their bad side, as it's very unlikely they will ever forgive you. This all tracks for Jill as she's purely motivated by success and the physical rewards that come with it, and strives hard in order to make the path there as easy to get to as possible, which are all things that would be highly appealing to the materialistic desires of an Earth sign. With Capricorn Capricorn's cardinal quality, Jill is also a great planner who possesses the innate ability to make other people follow her. We see this not only with how she controls Charlie as her partner in crime, but also with how she's positioned herself as the de facto leader of her friend group by altering the reality around them through subtle shades of gaslighting. Capricorns are also overly serious and aloof, as they have a very pessimistic attitude, especially when it comes to other people's knowledge and beliefs. They typically only want to adhere to their own well-defined worldview, and can be incredibly condescending to anyone who doesn't share their set of ideas, taking it personally when people don't have the same level of knowledge on a subject as they do. Because of this, they often overlook their own emotions in favor of practicality, which can make them cold and distant and lead to deceptive behavior, but it also allows them to stay calm and level-headed at all times. This is important for Capricorns because they need to think through everything and analyze all scenarios, otherwise they'll back themselves into a corner, where the only way out is to act on impulse, which is usually where they'll run into problems. In addition to that, their know-it-all attitude could also be a detriment to them, as their encyclopedic capacity for facts and ideas often finds them over-explaining things to people that nobody asked to hear about. And while most of our ghost face killers do tend to get caught up in monologuing, Jill seems to take things a step further, as her big mouth ends up revealing even more information than she ever needed to let on. Next up is a Aquarius, who's going to be represented by Mickey Altieri. Aquarians are known for being the humanitarians of the Zodiac, as their ideologies and political viewpoints are primarily concerned with changing the world through social justice. They're strong-willed and independent thinkers whose individualistic nature and radical yet logic-oriented beliefs find them thinking outside the box while marching to the beat of their own drum. As a fixed air sign, the basic traits of an Aquarius are on full display with Mickey, as he is both intellectual 
intellectually driven and completely stuck in his own ways. In particular, we see this regarding his staunch beliefs that violence in cinema is responsible for a large percentage of American crime, and he's so committed to arguing that point that he's willing to take it all the way to the Supreme Courts and literally blame the movies as a justifiable defense for killing people. On the surface, Mickey's motive may seem downright psychotic in its extremism, but for an Aquarius, everything is an analytical problem that has to go through a rigorous thought process. And with a general understanding of how society works, they would know that they can tweak the system to avoid a murder conviction, as Mickey even points out that he'll get political and financial backing from powerful groups who champion his defense. In that way, an opinionated and stubborn Aquarius, who gets absorbed into an idea, can argue and intellectualize their convictions without compromise, and if told that their way of thinking is flawed or downright wrong, they could be driven to the point of anger, where they'll go to unimaginable lengths to ensure that you eat your words. This is because they have an insatiable need to prove themselves and are able to detach from their beliefs emotionally and look at the argument through a world lens. This tendency to be distant and unemotional could not only be seen as an exhibition of their cold-hearted and cruel behavior, but also give them the ability to commit atrocities for any perceived greater good within their own universe of ideas and logic. Despite their aloof nature, however, Aquarians are deeply empathetic and can be good listeners even if it seems robotic or involves a lecture. This may contradict with their cold and calculating ways, but in order to have strong humanitarian views, you need to have a good understanding of human behavior. And considering that Mickey is a killer for hire who doesn't actually have a skin in the game, he does display what appears to be honest affection and positivity towards his friends. This is because all Aquarians possess the will to be the very best versions of themselves and actually do genuinely enjoy the company of the people around them. However, their dangerous trait is the fact that they are extremely passionate about the ideas they bring forth, and the focus and determination that they put into these obsessions is oftentimes the cause for the antipathy and dissolution in their lives. And finally, we have Pisces, who's going to be represented by Charlie Walker. Pisces are considered to be the most sensitive sign of the Zodiac. They're selfless and extremely caring towards their friends and family, and they live their lives to the fullest while spreading love and good vibes all around. However, because they have so much affection to offer, they tend to place others up on a pedestal and put a great deal of importance into these people's opinions, which in turn can find Pisces becoming easily influenced and taken advantage of. This is a result of them being overly idealistic, as they're incapable of seeing the world as it is, and will instead act as though they're already living in the world they want. We're shown this with Charlie, as he's so eager to see the absolute best in Jill, that he has willingly blinded himself to the obvious signs of her manipulation, and bends over backwards to accommodate every single one of her wants and whims. Unfortunately, however, these submissive and gullible tendencies are par for the course, as a Pisces escapism and dreamy detached nature will find them thinking through everything with their heart, rather than being more practical and using their head. As a mutable water sign, they're also constantly prone to change their emotions, as their highly empathic abilities will find them exploring and adjusting to the feelings of those around them. This makes sense with Charlie, as throughout his movie we see him entertaining the idea of a romantic relationship with Kirby, as she begins to take notice of him and expresses a reciprocal interest. Of course, he ultimately chooses Jill, as his wagon may have already been hitched to her post, but that doesn't make the decision any easier, as we can see by his reaction to stabbing Kirby that he is quite visibly upset for having been put in the position in the first place. This is because a Pisces emotions are always conflicting with one another, as their symbol as the fish even represents their feelings being pulled in opposite directions. This often causes them to become passive, confused, moody, and overly sensitive, as these dramatic and pendulous swings in their emotions will not only create problems for themselves, but also for everyone in their circle, eliciting the potential for others to become upset with them, which as a result makes them feel even worse. This could suggest that Charlie allowed and anticipated for Kirby to survive, with the rationalization that it worked as both an act of mercy for one girlfriend, while still somewhat fulfilling his obligation to the other. However, this also showcases a Pisces inability to think through a decision before making it, as well as letting their idealism push them to start things they're unable to finish. And when things eventually backfire, which in Charlie's case they do, it's very unlikely that Pisces will take responsibility as they perceive any bad karma and misfortune that befalls them as part of some divine mystical intervention rather than a cause and effect of their own poor
poorly thought out actions. I want to thank my Patreon supporter, Sean Flanagan. Make sure to let me know in the comments which ghost face killer you got. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and check out some more Scream related content in these playlists right over here. Until next time, I've been Zach Cherry and I'll be right back.